Hello everyone. Uh, today we're going to study an interesting connection between mathematics and art, which I call Topo Goofy. It's kind of hard to say, but it's kind of fun to actually do. Uh, so what we're going to do is uh, we're going to be doodling what I call two colorable curves. It sounds a little bit difficult, but you'll see it's actually quite a bit of fun. Uh, so first, let's discuss what is meant by two colorable. The easiest way to understand this is, is to think of the checkerboard. If I just gave you the checkerboard completely blank, uh, with just the grids, and I ask you, can you color it using the least amount of colors, with the condition that no two cells, no two regions next to each other should have the same color, uh, you can very easily see that uh, two colors would suffice. So you could start with black, the next one cannot be black, so you could use white, then you could go back to black, etc. Uh, so that's what a two colorable uh, uh, map means. Now, here are some examples of the kind of things that we're going to do. You could really be creative here. I'll have all kinds of uh, shapes in the form of animals, etc. So let's actually understand the rules of uh, topography. Uh, so the first rule is we're going to draw the curve without lifting our hand off the paper. This shouldn't be too difficult. Um, so let me just quickly demonstrate that. So let me uh, just demonstrate this. Uh, I'm using right now a program called Paintbrush, so you could do this on any uh, paint program that you feel comfortable. So uh, here is, uh, let me just grab a pen here. So here's an example of a curve uh, that uh, I'm going to draw without my lifting my hand off. So you start, do your thing. And just keep doing it. Now, if I lift my hand and then pick somewhere else, that violates the rule. So it basically tells you do not lift your hand up. Uh, that doesn't mean, by the way, you can't take a break, right? So what you could do, so let's say at this point you had to do something else, the bell rang, or you had to answer your cell phone. Uh, as long as you come back to where you started uh, and continue, that's kind of cool, all right? Now, the second rule, which I'm going to actually read from here, uh, the curve must start and end at the same point. So let me do this all over again so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to start doodling. Uh, and what you could do is you could do whatever you want. There's one other rule I'll explain in a minute. But as long as you start and end at the same point, right? So this is the start. And also, at the same time, the end, we're cool. So, that's the first two rules. Now, the third one is the hard one to understand. So, let me just quickly uh, read it to you, and uh, we'll see if we could uh, make sense of that. Let me first of all get rid of everything I have here. The third rule says, you can cross the curve you have, already drawn, as many times as you wish, anywhere you want. But you cannot go through a previous point of intersection. So, that sounds a little bit hard to understand. So, let me just uh, try to explain what I mean. Uh, so, let's say I start the curve, and I cross it once. What it tells you is, you can cross it at a place like this. But what you cannot do is go back to a previous intersection point and cross there. So the last thing I did is not acceptable, so let me do that again. So basically it tells you this is okay, but this is not okay. Okay, and you'll see why this is going to be a big deal in a minute. All right, so let me give you the overview, and then we're going to actually go back uh, and uh, talk more. So these are the three rules. Draw the curve without lifting your pen. Uh, the curve must start and end at the same point, and you can cross the curve you have already drawn as many times as you wish anywhere you want, but not through a point of previous intersection. Normally the last one is the hardest one to understand, and here's the third rule again. It is showing you that uh, you can cross the curve anywhere you want, except at a point of previous intersection. All right, with practice, this will become uh, actually also quite trivial. Now, uh, again, these are kind of examples we're going to do. Now, uh, you could really go wild with this. So here's an example. I'm not really an artist, but here is an example of something I've done. Uh, if you look at this, uh, you'll see uh, this, uh, these principles in action. And you can see how a human being and a horse have been transferred into a pretty unrecognizable uh, example of topo goofing. Alrighty, so you might uh, wonder why topo goofy, right? Always start with the why. Uh, my answer to this is, why not? It seems uh, easy, fun, creative, relaxing. Uh, but for me, it's also important uh, to come up with examples where we can merge art uh, which is sublime, and mathematics, which I find really fascinating and sometimes difficult. But uh, you might wonder, where is the math? What do you mean by math? Because we didn't do any numbers or anything like that. Uh, but this uh, construct that we're doing is it falls in the category of what is called topology. That's why the name topo goofy is basically goofing around with topology. Uh, and uh, we might be curious why a curve that we create by the rules of topography is always too colorable. So the moment you start asking questions like this, you enter the realm of mathematics. Why is something uh, possible? Uh, this is now going a little bit beyond art because you have an analytical question that you are trying to answer. Uh, I will not give you the answer for this, and to be honest with you, I have some answers, but I'm not sure they cover all possible cases. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you a hint of an answer, which I think is on the correct direction, okay? So you can think of this as a research topic. So here's my hint. So imagine that this is a doodle that I have drawn. Observe, it follows the rules of uh, topography. Uh, start someplace, end someplace. Clearly, I have not lifted my hand up while I'm drawing this. And observe, every time I cross the curve, I cross it at a uh, place other than a point of previous intersection. Now, if you look at this carefully, you're gonna notice that intersection points, which are called nodes, have a certain property here, and I wrote here node degree four, okay? So first I want you to contemplate what is a node and what is meant by the degree of a node, okay? And you're gonna notice that um, four things meet at an intersection point, the same here, four things meet, four things meet. So uh, this might give you an idea what I mean by a degree of a node. And observe that uh, if you pay attention to this, you might end up with a criteria for two colorability when a curve becomes too colorable, meaning uh, two colors are enough, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch back to paint uh, brush. So let's actually do an example of this so you can see this in action, okay? So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get rid of this stuff here. Uh, let's do a little doodling here, and then uh, let's see how you get to color this. So, I am now starting to create a shape. I'm going to just do a doodle, go back, hoo -hoo -hoo -hoo. and again, as long as I end up with where I started, according to the theory, this should be too colorable. Okay, so let's give it a try. Uh, it's important to note that the outside of the curve is also part of the color scheme. So, let's give the outside white, so I'm going to do this. I come and I pull color uh, with the bucket here, black color, and observe, to a point of intersection, to a node, you can bleed the color into the other round. Hop, now, hop, hop. 
and then observe if I do this last one, here's a curve that I was able to color only using two colors, and the outside is obviously has to have some color in this case white. Okay, so that's what I mean by uh, doodling and two coloring. And if you're creative, you could really just go crazy here. I'm not going to attempt it, but I just want to show you that uh, you could really just make like person shapes, etc. So here's my sad attempt at doodling. I'm sure you could do this much better. Uh, so here's imagine a person, and here's where we go crazy. Ooh. Okay, uh, and that last part I'm not terribly proud of. So I'm just going to get rid of this part. Okay. But uh, let's see, uh, let's color this, that, that, and that, okay? So here's an example of a uh, quick attempt. Alrighty, let's go back to what we were doing. We try to understand the mathematics that might be lying behind this. Um, so what I want you to be aware of, uh, when two colors are enough, you have a situation like this. You have a part of the curve, another part of the curve intersecting, and around this, if you think about it, you really need two colors to, to, uh, to, to be able to color this region. So one color here, one color there, like the blue and blue, and two and two, pink and pink, and observe, here's a node of degree four. Okay, and this was enough to be able to color. Now let's consider when you might need a third color, what kind of a situation uh, might be, or might call for that. And this is where you may want to pause the video and think about this on your own for a second. Okay, now here's a situation where you might have three colors required. Uh, a color uh, at one, a color at two, and three, the blue, the green, the pink, as you can see. And observe, the node here has a degree of three. So the question is, does our rule, do our rules of topography, do they ever lead to a situation like this? Uh, well, at least in this example that I'm showing you here, everything clearly has a note for, okay? So let's think about this a little bit more. This is not an explanation really, but uh, it's a hint. Let's call it a hint. Now, I want us to go beyond. You could really do some crazy stuff using uh, a, a program like Paintbrush and create some uh, interesting artwork that actually would fall into the realm of what is called op art, optical art. Uh, observe, I took a bunch of squares, uh, etc. But observe, every node I have here has degree four. And previously, that was actually kind of good news, right? So every time you had an intersection having a degree four was good news. Uh, you could really go crazy with this. Whoa, so here's something that I'm gonna show you how to do, uh, observe. So let's actually do something like that, okay? So let me get rid of this thing here. Uh, you could really get creative. So here's a uh, sort of a smooth rectangle tool. Just make sure every time you're intersecting the, the earlier uh, one, you obey the rules of topography. Observe, this actually wouldn't be a single curve that I'm creating. So in that sense, uh, uh, I have kind of contradicted myself. You're not really drawing a curve without lifting your hand off the paper. But what really matters is uh, being able to create these uh, independent curves that always create degree uh, nodes of degree four. Let's really get fancy here. Let's put some ellipses and circles uh, okay, so here's another thing right here. Here's another thing here. You could even create one within the other. Okay, uh, so let's just do one last one and end it here. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take our uh, coloring tool and let's see what we can do. So I'm gonna color this one black because the outside is always gonna be white. I don't have a control over this. I'm gonna make this one black. Now this can bleed through the intersection like that, and then like that. Then let's see where we could travel from here. This to that to that to that to that. Okay, and then to that to that to that to that. To that and to that, I feel kind of like a you know, like an artist actually. Uh, okay, so here's an example of something that uh, is pretty cool. And if you have some artistic talent, uh, imagine what you could do. Okay, so uh, I'm just gonna keep going this. And now they have a singleton uh, of these in a paint program, etc. You could duplicate, put them together, and start creating some really uh, crazy stuff. Okay, uh, so woohoo, have tons of fun, top of goofing around. And uh, here's a little cartoon you're still horsing around, and the horse says, Oh, yeah, enjoy, have fun, keep doing math and art. Take care.